Hey everybody, Scoutcraft here again. It's uh, Wednesday. We're going to have a little bit of a mosh today. You know, uh, before I was thinking about YouTube, I was watching uh, Dave's video and and uh, he was talking about the YouTube and how their policies are uh, slightly changing and whatnot. And uh, I was thinking that, you know, YouTube has really affected a lot of us. And, and when you think about the internet, how big and vast it is, you know, I think YouTube has probably been more uh, effective in changing how, uh, for a lot of us, our lives than any other aspect of the internet. That and online billing, that's that's pretty easy, right? But um, I have to tell you, uh, you know, going back to the early days of YouTube, we didn't realize how much of a, of a of influence it would be, but it really has. And, and uh, one of the things I was thinking about is uh, years ago, I was on the bus with my buddy, and uh, Justin, and, and he said to me, I was eating a banana, and he says, you're doing it wrong. And I said, I said what? He says, you're peeling a banana all wrong. And uh, let's talk about now, that. Now, here's the uh, typical beautiful banana that we all know and love so much. And I like my bananas to be perfectly yellow. This is like a, a day past uh, what I actually like. I like them when there's yellow with no spots, but... Uh, I have people that like them when they're almost brown, you know, so everybody likes them maybe a little bit different on how ripe they get. Um, I had a friend uh, that I used to work with who actually uh, ran a banana company and he was telling me all kinds of stories of how they, you know, gas ripened and things like that. But um, when I was peeling the banana, has, as I've done since I'm a kid, you know, you grab the top and you pull it down and, and he just was like, no, no, no. He says, you're supposed to squeeze the edge here and, and peel it that way. Now, you've probably seen all these videos on YouTube and everything explaining that. And I was just wondering, how do you peel the banana? Do you do it the normal way, which, you know, is you peel it like this and peel the one strip down? Or do you do it the newfangled YouTube way where you squeeze the two here and pull it out this way? And I'll tell you why I do now, what I when do. when Justin and I had that heated argument on how to peel a banana, um, you know, he, he made a good point. He says, you know, uh, just because you've been doing it the same way doesn't mean it's right. And it's true. I learned that a long time ago from my first firearm instructor. And he says, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And it's so true. So just because you've been doing something a long time doesn't mean you've been doing it right. So I started peeling bananas Justin's way, you know, the way that he said that monkeys do it. And he's, <laughs> he said that's the way it's done. He says even if you look at old cartoons, he says when you see a banana peel on the floor, they've been peeled this way and his way. And I, But you know what? Something that I found out is that doing it his way, there's no satisfaction, you know. Um, there's satisfaction in so many of the little things we do. And peeling a banana is one of them, even breaking open a hard-boiled egg. If you don't know how to open up a hard-boiled egg and you sit there and you're peeling it and you always got peels and you're ripping the skin off, you know, or you don't know how to boil an egg so the skin pops off easy. I mean, these are all things we learn over years. And it's very satisfying when you do something right, especially that you're used to and it works. So that's why I went back and I, am, uh, I do it the old-fashioned way. I pull the top down instead of the bottom up or whatever. So... Let me know how you okay, do Okay, next up, you remember a while back when we did the uh, the hack knife and I uh, smoothed out the edge here? Well, a good friend of mine, Alan, from Curiosity Forge, Alan said to me, he said, you know, maybe they left it that way to strike ferro rods, you know? If you don't know what ferro rods are, these are little rods that uh, that they use for starting fires. But the funny thing is... The whole ferro rod uh, popularity became with the YouTube because of the whole bushcraft pot explosion out there, the bushcraft. And, and it's it's like if you were going to do woodworking, you wouldn't take an old brace drill to drill a hole. I mean, that's, you know, unless you're doing traditional woodworking. And it's the same thing with a ferro rod. You know, people that camp all the time, you want to get a fire started quickly. You're not going to sit there and practice your survival techniques. That's kind of... Once you get that down pat, you pretty much, you, you know, you, you store it away. But now they got these guys that every time they want to light something up or start a fire, they think that they have to do it with a uh, ferro rod. Well, the truth is that, uh, and I've been on thousands of hours of camping, uh, we use the quickest fire starter you can get going. And I wanted to show you, through my 20-something years of scouting, I wanted to show you the best fire starter that my favorite. Yeah, we're going to use this for uh, to make sure that the fire don't get out of hand. But you ever see an old frying pan like this? This is an old. These were cheap and inexpensive. You know, they were made a lot during the Depression. People were bored. They're, they're not cast iron. They're a, a steel pan. It's an old frying pan. This one you can see here. It's made by National. 
Can you see the lettering here? Let me hold it under the light here. You could probably see it better. And it says uh, National, made in the USA. And you don't see these type anymore. But it's good for uh, doing fire starting demonstrations. Now, these fire starters I'm about to show you are my personal favorites because they're simple. And, and these are ones, by the way, that are just homemade, made from home articles, not made from things in nature where uh, there are hundreds in nature that you could use. But this is th that you would bring from home and you carry. You know, the model for the Boy Scouts is be prepared. And we always had fire starters with us. You carry them in a bag like this, lightweight. But uh, the first one is a cotton ball that's uh, swabbed in petroleum jelly. Okay, you just take a cotton ball, you swab it in petroleum jelly, and uh, again, you can use your fire, your ferro rod if you feel you must, but look at how quick that starts up, and look how clean that burns. Now, I'm down in the basement here, I don't want to sit off the fire, you know, but that burns super clean, and it'll burn for minutes, and a nice good flame. If you need it to start a fire, that's exactly what you want. You want something that's going to produce a lot of flame, and then you could throw whatever you have to, and really like this one. I'm going to put it out now just because I don't want to make sure that it doesn't sit off. Okay, the now we just put it out. We smothered it out. Uh, that'll burn for minutes, you know, with just one cotton ball. A little Vaseline, fantastic. Next thing is just good old-fashioned wax paper. Uh, again, if you've never, wax paper burns clean, burns quickly, and a little, look at that, another nice flame. And again, you know what these smell like when they're burning? They smell like birthday candles because that's basically what's burning is the wax or paraffin that is around it. And with the petroleum jelly in here, it burns clean. You don't have to worry about smoke and it burns for a long enough time that even if your kindling isn't fine enough, it'll start up uh, a lot of your fire. So uh, wax paper, and the cotton ball in Vaseline. But I'll show you my all-time favorite. you see how great both of them work. So here's my all-time favorite. Take a cotton ball, uh, take it into some Vaseline. And again, you just have to take just a little bit of Vaseline like this. And then what I like to do is take it inside of a piece of wax paper and then bring up the corners like this and then twist the corners like this. Now that's my all-time favorite fire starter and that's it you see how quick it was to make that now when you like this if, if you're in real windy condition i mean uh not windy conditions you can untwist it a little bit but windy conditions you can leave it closed just light that up and this thing will burn for like four minutes start just about any fire and the good thing is it's fairly waterproof because you have this twisted wax paper around here but you store them in a small bag like this and you can put like eight of them in a small bag and uh, this, you know, that's that's all you need. So forget the ferro rod. <laughs> okay, one last thing for extra credit. We always had to do something to wow the scouts, you know. They got to make sure you, they got to, scouts have to think that you know it all, even if you don't, you know. Uh, we always had some steel wool to carry to clean the pans, the pots and pans, things like that. But let's say you're out there, you don't have a, you ran out of matches, you don't have a lighter, you don't have a ferro rod. Uh, I would say, give me a piece of steel. I'd say, Tommy, give me your flashlight. And I would take out, the batteries from his flashlight and uh, then what you would do is you hold the batteries like this you know just like they go in the flashlight and stretch out a piece of uh, steel wool like this and then touch one to the bottom and one to the top and it'll give you a uh, little bit of a fire starter here you'll see so let me get a little bit thinner here you see that and there you go there you have your little bit of a fire starter with two batteries and some steel wool. Now, this will make some smoke. Let me put that out. Okay, next up uh, this week, Mr. Pete had a great video, uh, two-part series on identifying metals. You know, Mr. Pete's great. He's, he's one of the better YouTube creators ever out there. He's unbelievable. But he had uh, identifying different metals. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Great video. But one of the metals that he didn't have in there, because uh, I don't even think this metal really exists to most people, it's called Zimaloy. Let's check it out. Okay, there's a story behind these. Uh, one time I was at a ham radio flea market and uh, somebody had one of these over there and I was like, I picked it up and I'm looking at it and the guy says, you know what that is? I said, I have no idea what that is, but it's way cool and I like it. And he says, that's a hip replacement joint. And I was like, what? He says, yeah, a salesman used to carry, you know, have, a, have them in the... You know, this is when you went in to get a hip replacement, they would show you what you're going to get. And I said, wow, I, you know, it was 20 bucks. I said, I'm going to get it when I, I'm going to come back later and get it. Believe it or not, it was it was sold. 
I came back like 20 minutes later, it was sold. So I had to find a couple, I found these on eBay years later and uh, now these are older and you can see here, it's called Zimaloy or is it Zimaloy? I don't even know, but I can't even find that metal. And you can see here, that's the size of the ball because these all have to be sized. This one's smaller than this one. They all, these were salesman samples. They didn't come from a crematorium or somebody's body, but they are really cool, aren't they? Uh, Zimaloy is a really, uh, it's like a space age alloy and uh, it's non-magnetic. And, um, you know, they would put this into your, you know, this would go into your, your hip bone and, and uh, this is the ball and socket for your hip. So, uh, but this is early now, everything's changed, but this was, I guess, 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Pretty interesting, huh? Zimaloy. I just think that ball, that this is so cool. I said, this be a great stick shift or look at how this is made. I mean, this is like aerospace stuff, you know? Anyway, Zimaloy. Okay, last up, my buddy Ray. Um, Ray was, has a channel and he was beefing up an old, uh, well not old, but he, he picked up a Harbor Freight uh, press, hydraulic press, and he was uh, beefing it up and a very good video on that. And um, Ray had mentioned that he uses uh, hockey pucks and I, said, and I said, what? How how genius is that? Let's now, check you know, it out. On, uh, when I use the dake, a lot of times I use wood blocks and everything to stop. Uh, but Ray said he got these and he says he picked these up and they were cheap. If you buy them in bulk, you get them for like a buck each. And uh, they're hockey pucks, and they're it's a high density rubber. Look at how nice the knurling is around there. Now, the ones Ray has has printing on it because they're actually a better one, but I wanted it without the printing because I wanted to uh, to make you can machine these, you could do all kinds of things with a hockey puck. And I said, Man, how great would this be to have a um, you know, you could drill it, I can make it into an oil stand or something. Uh, it's knurled. I love it. So I said, I'm, I'm sure I'll find something. Can can you think of a use that you would use this for in your home shop? Because I'm telling you, I think this is the greatest thing and they're cheap enough. And the only thing, the one I bought, they come from China and they have a bit of an off gas smell when you first open a package. And the smell is very similar to what a Harbor Freight smells like when you walk in there. So, But these all come individually wrapped, so there's no smell until you open it. And, uh, you know, I, after a couple days, they say it don't smell anymore. But you can use these under a jack for jacking up your car or, you know, when you have that seam there. for, uh, And you can also use them underneath uh, workbenches, things like that. Really, uh, I don't know. I thought that'd be a great thing to learn. To so use. you can see by today's video just how, how much YouTube has impacted my life. Everything that we discussed during today's video had something to do with a YouTube creator or video or something or subject that was on YouTube. So... Anyway, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.